Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, this week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we talk about some odd choices at a pay-per-view, questionable choices by, by an organization, the pluses of Raw, and uh, Pray for Jerry. All this and more on Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show 337 coming at you from the studio, Mayhem Studios. That's the one in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm your host with the most Sorgatron right here, flipping the buttons, turning the knobs, and receiving uh, phone someone's calls. Someone's getting a phone call. Mm. This is Anthony. <laughs> Uh, mute. Hello. <laughs> I don't know who the hell Anthony is. Who the hell is Anthony? Also with us from San Antonio, Texas, is WrestleFan. Sky, hello. How's it going? WrestleFan here for the Wrestling Mayhem Show number 337. I don't take phone calls because I have a bit more professionalism than Chachi, apparently. Oh. Whoa. Wow. Well, he's on the phone. He can't hear me. Right, um, so yeah, that's the damn show. Let's do this. Also with us is the Riz. I'm gonna tell him you said that. Tell yeah, him. I am back. I've been gone for what a few weeks now, and Let's now I'm, I'm right here. Hey Riz. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, wait. Riz, please. Sword, sword. Yeah, yeah. Where's my pyro? There's no pyro. Where, where's my pyro? You have to make an announcement. You don't it's deserve pyro. pyro. It's not in the budget. Yeah, you have to make an announcement to get pyro. I, I'm on the show. Isn't that the big I, announcement? Uh, no. I should no, get no, pyro no. for being on this show. No. You have to, I, you have to book a tag match. No, that I deserve pyro. <sighs> <laughs> See? That's the Why story of I? your life. Yeah, there, there we go. Pyro. Pyro. Thank you. Wait, thank you, Sorg. Thank you. See, about and, and it's very qualified because about that's, time. That's the best relation to what TNA Pyro probably is. And also returning again this week is Wheels. Hey, uh, yep, I'm back, and hopefully I don't have to deal with any dumb rednecks or anything like that. I get just to deal with a wrestle fetus, so I'm okay that's, with that. That gets Pyro. Which I'm technically a redneck, but, you know. If hey, you're, well, you're from yeah, Texas. You're a better redneck. <laughs> so there's no better. Redneck. That's like being the world's tallest midget. There's no better redneck. <laughs> Sorry, that one just caught me. Wow. And by the way, I didn't say midget for... I, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's how... That happened. That, that happened, and this is how the Wrestling Mayhem show rolls. Uh, we're here, of course, every... Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern or so. Uh, join us at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And also, make sure you're joining us there and not the Justin TV. Uh, because that is where we are. Uh, we have a new chat. Uh, and you will not be in the it's same chat if you go cool. to Justin TV. It, it, looks, so it looks fancy. It's fancy. You can log in with Twitter chat. and your Facebook. So go check that out, of course. Um, Chachi is here. He'll be joining us here in a little bit on the show. Uh, so don't worry about that. He's got stuff to do. Um, but that's all right. Uh, according to Wrestle Fan, it's not important. According to Wrestle Fan, of course. <laughs> um, so the, Do you really listen to Wrestle Fan? No. <laughs> exactly. Of course, you, are, me. you can join us also at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Blip TV, on your Roku, de- Roku devices under under the Blip TV uh, app. Uh, you can also uh, let us know uh, what you think about the show. Anything else going on? Let us know what you think of what's going on in wrestling in general. Like good times. Good times. Good times. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Also, drop us, drop us a line at uh, our phone but, line. No. Hold on, I'm trying to find it. But, but, oh, no. Oh, no. I lost my mouse again. Oh, you no. lost your mouse? Oh, you there it is. It. There it is. Hi, I found it. Uh, <laughs> that's at 412-206-WMS0. And also, buy the app. Dollar ninety nine on your Amazon Buy App Store it. or iOS App Store. Uh, that is that is that is where you'll find quick quick access to all the stuff going on. I think Riz had it there. There he is. There he is. Kind of, kind of there. there you go. Bonus content. He's Bonus showing off the there. episodes. Let's see what else. Stuff we're not you can else. you can call the show yeah, right from the phone. Email the show. show. Drunk Dowd's show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow yeah. us on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. 
we don't have a tout button because we're not that cool. <laughs> not yet, at <laughs> least. Not yet. Um, nope. of and course. if you buy the app, you can get me a really cool cripple cart like I already have. Oh, I'm kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> cripple carts for everybody. Yes. Wouldn't I, that I be like amazing? that idea. We'll race them. It'd be tremendous. <laughs> uh, Mayhem show drag strip. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, we, we're going to start the show like we usually uh, do. I'm sorry. I'm a little off. I've got something new over here. Um, we're going to start the show as we like to uh, with the fan mail. Now, we have obviously a little bit of a situation. We've had a really great contributor the last few weeks uh, with Big PPC. Um, and we've <laughs> added a little bit of a foreign flair to the emails. Now, this week, we don't have AJ. We don't have DJ Launchbox. So the responsibilities for better or for worse fall on Wrestle Fan. Oh, Do it with so an accent. Is. I have big, <laughs> I have big accent. shoes to fill. Big, big Russian shoes to fill. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how this goes. Uh, there were a couple sent in, uh, but I'm going to go through uh, just a few of them. Uh, so yeah, let's see how this goes. Hey, man, screw it's me, it's me, it's Big PPC Finn. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't promise it'd be good. <laughs> Puzzle and smack do it, do it, Puzzle all, man. Up Give it all. And David Otunga basically walking Rodriguez down to a ring like he was May Young. While not sure what's slower, currently walking to ring or this walk, but good selling the injuries, I guess. Otunga doing what he does best, act like the cooler, stronger Clarence Mason, crossing T's and dotting I's. I'm going Indian. What the fuck? Just go with it. Do it. Go with it, man. And he always tells the truth, and he never tells a lie. Nation of domination (laughs) reference. Anyways, (laughs) at least Otunga isn't wrestling except in squash matches against Champ, right? Well, right. Seamus should win whether you like him or not. Don't hate him for his skin color. Geesh, always picking on the white man. I know that doesn't Oops. sound legit, but so is the logic of Rodriguez getting kicked was on purpose. Let me throw myself in front of a moving anything and be like, what the fuck? You hit me and I am suing. What the fuck ever? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> the marvelous mass monstrosities or El Mexicrap or Sin Cara and Ray versus Cody and Niz, good match. But like I said, Mexicans win again. Por qué? Cody and his racist team with Tensi, Tensi and whoever he teamed with before. It has been a revolving door of teammates for Cody, but whatever. Send down looking cowardly? No fucking way. Most people have some sort of notice of their matches, but for them to just throw in a, in a match with that bullshit snake rat Orton, I would I would have ran as well. Then came back and given that snake the thrashing it deserved. Every snake his day, I guess. Whatever. This isn't animal fucking planet. <laughs> Seamus and his pro kick should be legal. Whatever Cloverleaf is cool too, I guess. He stopped doing the high cross, aka Razor's Edge. They needed to just make some stipulation to this match instead of some same old, same old stipulation. It's fun to say, right? Steve <laughs> <laughs> Bryan and Ryder match slash hug was pretty entertaining. Never thought I would be talking about hugging so much in wrestling. Does this make... <laughs> Does this make me, you know, that way? No, no, no. <laughs> Black guys, primetime players, beat Puerto Ricans, Epicol, and Primo so that they can have the black guys win at Night of Champions. I put my money on the black guys every time. <laughs> millions of people millions of pe- people may not care about this match we will see and finally the former bare knuckle fighter the English badass Mr. Barrett fucking Barrage Wade Barrett makes his return against Yoshitatsu 
It was squash match like it should be. I would have liked to see seen Wasteland, but his unique elbow finisher was pretty cool. Best news, he says, if he is not in title picture or in main event caliber match, that he will be opening his service APA style or Hitman style. Sounds good to me. I miss the Funkasaurus and the Drunkadactyls, or is it just me? We would probably get Sandow versus him if old girl could dance as good as she drives drunk. <laughs> Till next time, it's me. It's me. It's Big PPC Fit. All right, I gotta say right, it right yeah. off the bat. I enjoy the little bit of embellishment. Oh, okay, we can kill that. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, 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 I love the embellishment. I don't know how like you're like on whatever page with this email, but you just like... This is the funny thing to say. Um, <laughs> I, I gotta give Lunchbox. If anyone listening, at home, you know, please give DJ Lunchbox credit. It is harder than it looks. You know, I gotta give you. I gotta give you credit, Russell fan. You did it. That, no, I mean, yeah. at the beginning, you went from like Indian. It was to, really Indian to Macon to back to Indian. You had to get in the groove. And then you get in the groove, and, and the music helped inspire. The, the Russian got his groove yeah. back. <laughs> it's how Russell Pink got his groove back. Exactly. Yes. All right. And with that, uh, to to unkayfabe all of us, uh, Big PPC also left a voicemail. <laughs> so we're going to see how that goes. Uh, Wait, still play this in the tre- Tetris music, though. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I can't you know, multitask so. that. Come oh. on. Hey, what's going on, Wrestling Mayhem Show? It's, it's me. me. It's, it's me. me. It's me. It's me. It's right me. Right the bat. I oh, wait. I have a stream. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm like, why do I hear? Why do I hear Rezo fan? I don't know how. Oh, it's 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 like it's both of us. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Okay, we're gonna try this. Sorry about that. We're gonna try this from scratch. Hey, what's going on, Wrestling Mayhem show? It's it's me. It's me. It's at Big BBC. And I was just wanted to comment a little bit on Raw. Fantastic segments with the heart and punk and else is doing and the whole deal. We're looking forward to seeing how punk and Haven's relationship goes from here. There's really a overall pretty good raw, even though the whole Jerry Lawler thing kind of obviously took a little damper on everything. Uh, I don't want to be that guy, but dude really shouldn't be wrestling anymore. I know he wrestles in other places. I don't want. I don't want to call. Any, it caused any ill or, you know, harm toward the, the Jerry King Lawler. But, you know, you probably shouldn't be even in any type of matches and to just be a commentator. What's wrong with that? Just being a commentator. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Antonio Cesaro and The Miz, that's a pretty cool tag team, even though I didn't expect it. Uh, our truth and Kings Kingston to fight Kane at the pay-per-view and Daniel Bryan. That's not a bad thing. I mean, kind of sucks for the whole primetime players, but the way it goes. I shall talk to you later, man. Bro. Make it easy. There you go. Um, yeah, there's uh, there is some interesting stuff happening in tag teams right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, tag what's... team wrestling. No, no, they, he was Yay. doing he was doing his English. Uh, He's not Russian. He's doing his American accent. Yeah, really it's good. American. Really good. Um, so he's a spy. I, I know. I was really, I was really pleased with the all champions tag team match as well. You know, maybe maybe we'll see something with Antonio and Miz uh, going on there. Um, That'd be cool. And, 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 yeah. Um, what was the other thing he was talking about? But the, uh, yeah, and, the, and the tag team uh, matchup. That's a nice wrinkle throwing uh, Kane, Kane and Daniel Bryan in there. Uh, always entertaining as usual. It made me the happiest boy in all the land. Exactly. Did we <laughs> uh, friendship? Did we? I think we missed some questions. Was there any questions? Uh, there was one question he sent in in one of the emails to talk about because there was some talk uh, on the new, uh, the news boards if you hadn't here. There was the possibility of. The Dudley Boys, uh, Team 3D, leaving TNA. Uh, it's been reported that Bully Ray has signed. Devon uh, is reportedly will be leaving. Uh, he brings up two questions. First would be, who is up for a Dudley Boys reunion in WWE? And the other is, who out of the Dudley clan was your favorite? And if you could be one of the Dudleys, who would it be? He says, I would be either Bubba Dudley or Sign Guy Dudley. Now, the, the, now I think a lot of us uh, know mostly the Dudleys from like WWE on. 
Um, yeah. I'm not mm-hmm. terribly, like, because they were just, like, some kind of weird faction to begin with, right? Yeah, there um, was Sun Guy Dudley, there was Big Dick Dudley, there was Dances with that's Dudley. What I, mean. I think it was Dudley Dudley. Dudley. Like, this remember? was the gimmick they just threw random guys at. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, even, even I think, like, the random guy that got cut by New Jack, like, for, like, right across his head, uh, like, that guy was there, like, kind of dressed in pretending to be a Dudley. From from the thing like from the pictures I've seen from it, it looks like he's dressed like a Dudley at least. Maybe um, like it, it was it was just this weird kind of throwing everybody in. It just I, I think Dubba, D- Devon and Bubba D- I, I combined them Dubba 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 E Dubba Dubba E um, Dubba Dust. <laughs> it, it just seemed like they're, they're the two that kind of rose up above the rest, and you know obviously we've seen what they've done since. Um, so. I don't know. I, I I'd like to see them pop up again, just to just just to see what they do with them. You know, like even if they don't wrestle again, mm-hmm. I'd like to see them as like a tag team coordinator or something. Yeah, I, I do feel like those. You're going to end up seeing those guys in the back in the next few years. Yeah. You know, although really, like, maybe Devon now, but geez, Bubba is doing so good. Yeah, yeah Bubba's that's doing the thing. Right? De- like Bubba, the way he's looking now. I mean, if mm-hmm. you put him and Devon in WWE now. They actually probably could hang with the. I think it'd be tag great. Teams. I think yeah. it, you you kind of bring them in and brings a little bit of legitimacy to the tag team division. You know, have them see what they can do with the young guys um, and, and see where it goes from there. I think it's the perfect it, thing to be like, just make a damn division. I think they'd be doing amazing yeah. things making that division. Uh, you know, something. You know, yeah, that, we're getting that, these four that ways. Is, we're getting all kinds the, of stuff going on. That is the only deterrent of me wanting to see them reunite because they could re- help reinvigorate the tag division. But God, Bubba's doing the best stuff he's been doing in years. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, I, and I don't want to see him lose that. You know, like that's been amazing stuff what he's been doing in TNA. And, and, and I heard that after uh, the main event, for whatever we thought with uh, with how that went and everything, it was really weird, of course, for us to watch that live. Um, I heard that they they, they gave uh, uh, Bully Ray Bubba a, a standing ovation after that. Oh yeah! So I mean, that guy is working his ass off in his shows. It mm-hmm. seems like every time they do a uh, the Bound for Glory series, mm-hmm. even though we say it's bad, they have that one guy who goes above everybody else. Last year it was James Storm. This year is Bubba Bully Ray. And like it just, it's weird to say that, but for having a crap ending. But it's we'll get into that later. But it's well, that not is TNA. <laughs> yeah, it's TNA. But it's it's good to see Bully Ray like outshine again, putting out good matches, singles matches, to be exact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if when Devon comes back to WWE, he's coming back as Reverend Devon. <laughs> and they bring back Batista. There you go. Deacon Bautista. Deacon Bautista. All right. Well, they have Mason Ryan. That's true. That's true. They could pretty much do that, right? Um, <laughs> all right. With that, I think it's down time for your amateur falling down report with the Wrestle Fan. Do it in hey, Russian. It is time. No, don't do it in general. Russian, please. <laughs> no, I can't. I, no, 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 no. Um, so it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for this week's Indie Minutes. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about in this week's Indie Minutes, because there's a lot of stuff, a lot of events coming up this weekend. Um, first, our friends at RWA, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, have an event coming up this weekend. I believe the 14th, I want to say. Am I right? Ooh, 15th. 15th. 15th, excuse me. Um, they have a uh, for Fall Free for All 4. Uh, it's going to be an awesome event with the main event of uh, Jimmy Nuts going one on one with Kato. Um, in, a, Kato. In, a, in a singles match, uh, Sorgatron Media will be in attendance for that one, and it's going to be a really awesome, awesome show. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. So I, def- I, I definitely encourage you to check out that event uh, September 15th, uh, this Saturday. Uh, if you want more information, uh, you can go to rwalive.com and check them out and, uh, and tell them you know, the Wrestling Mayhem show sent you, which, you know, having, since we're, you know, kind of working with them and all. Uh, uh, no, so th- really, Russell fan? Oh, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, so if I go and tell Hot Wheels that, that Wrestling Mayhem show sent me. Tell them right now. What do you, no, what are you no. waiting for? Riz, if you come over to me and tell me 
that the Wrestling Mayhem show sent you, I will look at you and go, yeah, I know. They sent me, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you was, worked there. Well, yes. yes you that you is have true. to be there. True. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, go check them out, and it's sure to be an awesome event. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the uh, big, big weekend of events that's coming up for Chikara Pro Wrestling, because this weekend is the big King of Trios tournament. Uh, it's going to be a really awesome show. Uh, I should say shows. Um, it's going to be the 14th, 15th, and 16th this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, all There's a ton of uh, amazing talent there, uh, including uh, Team WWF yeah. featuring uh, 123 Kid, uh, Aldo Montoya, and uh, Tatanka. Uh, that'll be cool. There's a Team ECW of Tommy Dreamer, Two Cold Scorpio, and Jerry Lynn. There's a, um, I believe, a Faces of Fear team uh, with people like the Barbarian and Meng. Uh, and a ton of great talent from Chikara um, and also talent from around the world uh, inter- uh, convening uh, in Eastern Pennsylvania to determine this year's King of Trios. It should be a very awesome event. If you and, and as we show Riz, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it proves. Um, so yeah, go to uh, uh, chikarpro.com. You can still order your tickets, I believe, for King of Trios for nights one, two, and three, and the Fan Conclave, which is the Saturday uh, event where you get to meet all the wrestlers, you get to play games. It will be karaoke. Um, it's going to be an amazing time. I definitely encourage them to check them out. So that's in Eastern Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, get your ticket to chikarpro.com and uh, enjoy that amazing weekend of professional wrestling. Uh, it's, you know, it's going to be... Uh, it's the biggest event every year. It's constantly bringing out amazing matches from people, so it's one to not miss. And if you do happen to miss it, I encourage you to check out the DVDs when they come out. Um and the next thing I want to talk about on this week's Indie Minute is that Ring of Honor has an eye pay per view coming up this weekend for their uh, big event, Death Before Dishonor 10, uh, on Saturday, uh, the 15th. Uh, you can get that eye pay per view at ROHWrestling.com. Uh, the main event will be Kevin Steen defending the ROH World Championship against Rhino. Um, there's going to be a lot of great stuff. Uh, the, fi- the semifinals and the finals of their tag team title tournament will also be at that event. Um, so they will be crowning new tag team champions. A lot of new stars that will be debuting uh, at that event, including uh, uh, ACH from down here in the Texas area. He will be wrestling at that, uh, debuting at that Ring of Honor pay per view. So I highly encourage you to check it out because uh, it's going to be some really awesome wrestling. Uh, you can go to ROHWrestling.com. Uh, all the pay per view information is there. Um, since they run it off their site now, it's going to be really, uh, I, it looks like, honestly, a really great card. Um, I'm interested to see the main event between uh, Kevin Cena and Rhino and see, you know, what comes of that. Uh, so, yeah, so go to ROHWrestling.com and go support uh, our good friends at Ring of Honor. Uh, and the next thing I want to talk about uh, is another event coming up this weekend uh, down here in Texas that I will be attending, and that's Anarchy Championship Wrestling's event uh, this Sunday, the 16th, for Evolution of the Revolution um, at the Mohawk in Austin, Texas, 912 Red River Street. Uh, it's going to be an awesome event with the main event, a Lone Star Classic uh, Tournament qualifying match when uh, Jerry Lynn goes one-on-one with Robert Evans. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. There's going to be tons of ACW talent there. Uh, a lot of great Texas talent will be there, uh, I, and I will be there. So if you want your tickets, you can go to Anarchy Tele- uh, AnarchyChampionshipWrestling.com, excuse me, uh, $15 for, uh, for ringside, t- uh, $12 for general admission, and then also 15 for the balcony seating at the Mohawk. Um, I highly encourage you. It's going to be a really awesome event. Uh, like I said, AnarchyChampionshipWrestling.com for all your ticket information. Also, if you're in the Austin, Texas area that weekend, the night before... The night before the ACW show, there's also going to be a special event going on at the New Movement Improv Theater in Austin, Texas, where five of the New Movement Improv comedians will be taking on five Anarchy Championship Wrestling uh, wrestlers, performers, uh, in a game of Family Feud. 
um, that down at the uh, New Movement Improv uh, Theater. It's a good way for you know ACW trying to reach out to the community, um, and it's going to be a real fun event. Uh, you know, uh, it's five dollars for admission. There's going to be drinks. It's going to be it's going to be a really fun time. Um, and the winner of that uh, game will get to predict the next game that the uh, the two will be competing in. Um, so I highly encourage you that that's the night before ACW um, on the fifteenth Saturday uh, at the New Movement Theater. Um, improv Comedy Theater on uh, 616 Lavaca Street uh, in downtown Austin, Texas. So I encourage you to also go check that out as I will be there as well. Um, so go check them out for something a little bit different and uh, uh, a little bit fun. Um, and the next thing on the Indie Minute is our good friends at IWC. I uh, definitely encourage you to check them out. Uh, they have released their new uh, IWC Aftershock Hosted by friend of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, one Justin Plummer. Uh, I encourage you to check them out uh, with some of the results and footage from Cage Fury, um, the big uh, event they had uh, recently. So uh, definitely check that out and also get prepared for Mountain St. Madness 3, the next event that they will be holding with a lot of great stuff. Uh, Logan Shulo defending the IWC Heavyweight title Shulo. against Dennis Gregory. Shulo! Um, and Shima Zion uh, making his return to his hometown of uh, well, his home state of West Virginia as he will be taking on Sanjay Dutt which was very eerily similar to something happened uh, this past weekend um, so definitely go check that out uh, and if you want more information for Mountain State Madness 3 you can go to iwcwrestling.com uh, and it's sure to be a really awesome event so I encourage you to get your tickets and the final thing we are going to talk about here on the Indie Minute uh, was something that was brought up uh, on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group that's caused a lot of controversy of sorts, a lot of talk, uh, at least a lot of talk, uh, about the our good friends of the National Wrestling Alliance. Now, so, Sorg, you know a little bit more about this than I do. Uh, maybe you read into it a bit more than I do. T- what, tell us what, what's going on with the, with the NWA. Well, um, I guess and this is just something that popped up. Oh, there's the article right there. Uh, so apparently <laughs> the article is pretty sensationalist. It's saying, NWA in turmoil. Meetings canceled. Can- Christmas is canceled. Ric Flair owns everything. Uh, no, I, no, I don't know. Uh, so that, that's that's one angle of it. Um and actually, Ric Flair hasn't even mentioned this article. Um, no, th- th- I guess they're they're trying to make new rules for the NWA. If those are new, I guess. Uh, as far as I understand it, uh, the NWA is is uh, you you buy into it to have the NWA name, and that gives you membership and voting power or something. I I don't know the details. I'm not a promoter. Um, and I haven't followed this too too much, but. There, there are some of the the sanctions we want to call them that are coming. That there are definitely ones that are not, you know, promoters are kind of backlashing against. Uh, you know, for one, uh, referee shirts uh, is in order to achieve a uniform look amongst all the NWAs. Because of course, you are definitely watching more than one NWA uh, group, right, guys? Right? Um, right. I don't know about you guys, but I watch like twelve. 12, 12 NWAs, yeah. 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 We, but, don't, but, we don't have NWA in Pittsburgh but, anymore. No, no. no. Is that in, like, western Pennsylvania, though? What's that? All those NWAs are probably in the same area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All, Actually, yeah, it kind of looks Texas like it. They're all in Arkansas. They're all in South and everything. Yeah, Texas, <laughs> Arkansas. Um, there's, there's none here anymore. So, uh yeah, it's yeah I was going to say, there is no more NWA. So, I shouldn't be that bad on the Texas ones. I'm going to a Texas one Friday. Funny Let enough. me know how that goes. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, See if everybody's wearing the same ref shirt. <laughs> no, this is I not, a, this is not I, enacted I yet. These are, the, I, these are the lines that are they're trying to push through, and that's, I think, why people are canceling meetings, having meetings, whatever. Um, so, but, well, you know, okay, that makes sense. Everybody wants to be in uniform, but what's that, Josh? Chachi. I'm Chachi says, and I'm a member of the NWA. No, so, not that no, Chachi, NWA. Not that NWA. Not that NWA. Not the one we can't say. This is the National not, Wrestling. Not the, not, not, the, not, the, not, the, not the binges with attitude. Okay? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, but, uh, well, but the, what the hell are we talking about? Right? <laughs> Exactly. I'm so confused. Yeah, all the ninjas are going to have the same uh, oh. referee outfits for some reason. <laughs> We're, you're lingering hey, way too long hey, on this one. Why do the black people have to be referees? Huh? What? 
<laughs> Who said there? There is a de- wait. There is a referee in WWE. We uh, synonymously call Black Ref. So yeah, why is that one. one? That's our fault. Yeah, yeah. That's like singular. So uh, yeah. yeah. There's, well, there's actually like two now. So he's Black Ref too. Yeah, um, they've, they've brought out some new refs. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so the referee shirts. Yeah. Why are we? Why is this the point everybody? Why are we? I, why, I don't get. I don't get why the. Uh, no offense. Well, let's explain it. You have to buy the sand, the shirt from NWA. They have not disclosed the price, so that's another. How many do you have to buy? Do you have to buy the thing in bulk? You know what do you you know? Then that's another cost. And these are ooh, uh, ooh, let's ooh, what? question. <laughs> what, Mister Carter? Mister Carter. I buy NWA referee shirts. I have no idea. Oh. They didn't really explain how how they buy the then to be a referee shirt. I just kind of want a referee shirt. The other thing, shirt. and this the and merchandise. I don't want to have to get a job at Foot Locker to no. get one. <laughs> <laughs> merchandise. A uh, licensee is free to produce and sell its own merchandise. However, merchandise containing the NWA logo, including but not limited to caps and T-shirts, must be ordered from NWA headquarters. That license. that is the that is the main one I have a problem with. Now now why do you, what's your problem with this here, Russell fan? I just I as, as a non promoter or business owner type like, person. I don't know shit about, you know, promoting. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm just a fan. But from what I from what I've you know, going into the independent scene for a long time and understanding mm-hmm. like how some of it works, merchandise is a big part of it. Yeah. You know, that's how a lot of wrestlers sort of, you know, you know, because those are like their great. I don't know if that's a surprise to many people. Um, so I feel, I if if that's the case, it needs to be handled correctly. Yeah, because merchandise merchandise is a tricky subject because that's where most wrestlers make a lot of their in- income, of, I guess, from shows. Hey, I don't know if this is entirely clear, because uh, licensee agrees to maintain an inventory of NWA licensed merchandise for sale, all licensee promoted live events. So basically, I think they're saying, if you are an NWA thing, you must have like just straight NWA t-shirts and, and, and hats and stuff, and you must maintain an inventory. They're requiring that you have something on hand, and that all shows. They're requiring that they have something that the NWA proper is selling to make okay. money to make money off of your show. Okay, and now here's um, license. which maybe that's fine, but yeah. I, yeah, if it's if it's targeting specific wrestlers, if it's like an NWA T-shirt or an NWA baseball cap they're selling, yeah, then I, was, I get it. Then that's fine. And, and there was there was other articles that kind of got into more of it. And I think they were just kind of mystical because like like one of the interpretations was like anything with the NWA logo on it had to be pretty much approved through and everything through the NWA. So you that kind of takes away a lot of your you know, maneuverability as a company, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, licensing fee, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's only $300 <laughs> to be a member. Licensing me- fee. You know, it's only $300 to be a member of the NWA. Can we make the Mayhem show a member of the NWA? No, thank you. Oh, no. Can, you, can we do this? I mean, this would be a grand experiment. Well, we're doing an no. application. No. 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 No, because no. then we have to can maintain an no, no, no. inventory of was, NWA can... gear, and I don't want to have to deal with that. Well, and I don't want to get matching shirts featuring NWA on it as well. We all have to wear them. I don't, we I don't really want to do that. That would make as well, me you know? NWA Hot Wheels. That would make NWA Riz, NWA Russell fan. No. I'm not changing my Twitter name. <laughs> what? Chachi says NWA. Chachi says? Yeah. There's nothing against Twitter names. Mm, Chachi oh, says I'm sure attitude. it's in the fine print. Well, uh, that isn't, but I did. I don't know if it's listed here, but I saw one that anything with like any video content. Let's wait, 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 wait. Yeah, here it is. Uh, YouTube posting of NWA content. Licensees must obtain proper written approval from the NWA before any video material, including but not limited to wrestling matches, interviews, promos, and angles, etc., uh, before posting any such material on the internet for free, such as YouTube or similar websites. I can. So that sounds like if hey, I hey. my show that I filmed that's an NWA blah blah blah, I can't post it to YouTube without a, being, getting approval from the NWA. They did not say podcast anything like that. I well, these are what about this implied might be more detailed. oral consent? What? What about implied oral consent? I have no idea. I mean, real, really, what's written in the, in the wrestling industry? You know, yeah. I, have you seen a written contract? Has anybody seen a written contract? Okay, I've seen one written contract, but still, I that's yeah, that typically doesn't happen. <laughs> yes, your, my, my written your, 
your no, yours in the venue. I'm sure. You never know. <laughs> you never know with the venue. Have you have you seen some of the places wrestle fan? The places that you've seen wrestling lately. I I've was, seen the pictures. Do you think there's written uh, anything for those? I was talking about <laughs> the, the one contract that you. Oh, uh, Bobby brought up a good point. What's I can't that? join the NWA. Why? I'm in the Wu Tang Clan. Oh, oh. kill the bees. All right. Um, <laughs> but honestly, like my the way I see it. I understand the frustration with it, mm. but at the same time, if you if a company is willing to pay the three hundred dollars to be an NWA affiliate, mm -hmm. there's going to be more stuff that comes to it. You're just not going to give them the three hundred and say, "Oh, now I'm an NWA affiliate." What is the it. advantage? I, that's oh, what I, I wish. I, I, you know, somebody if you're your your group or what you're a wrestler, you're a group, you're a fan of it. What is the advantage of being part of the NWA? There what is you, none. There is none. No, 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 seriously. What is it? Because somebody's paying this. Somebody's dealing with this. Somebody thinks you this is a good that? idea. So, so well, well, less people I think are. It used to be, it used to be, I think, you'd get your NWA World Heavyweight Champion come to all the affiliates. I think that's yeah. what it is. And that's one you know why? But does it really matter these days now? Yeah, because there's big names that have that title. Ric Flair had that title. Yeah. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, Jeff Jarrett had that title. Mm -hmm. Names. They all, AJ and, Styles. Yeah, AJ Styles. But now, okay, who's the NWA champion? Uh, Adam Pierce. Uh, and you're and you're excluding the wrestling fan. And, 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 and more recently, Colt Cabana. Cabana, yeah. It has nothing to do with yeah. names. It yeah. has nothing to do with names because AJ Styles wasn't a big name when he was NWA champion. No. You know? It's not. It's not about names. It's yeah, not it's about handled that. Different. So it's R-Truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. R-Truth. Was he a huge name when he won the NWA yeah, anyway. title? But, mm -hmm. but still, when, who was the biggest name to have that title? Ric like, Flair. In the last 20 years? Ric Flair. Yeah, Ric Flair. That's it. Uh, Harley Race, Terry Funk. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, it's, it's everybody, for, everybody is is pinned on the lineage and the history of the title, but, but nobody cares. Nobody the, cares. Nobody about the cares. Current champion, right yeah, now. what have you done for me lately? What have you done for anybody lately with that group? So, and, and, I mean, they, if you go to you go to like, well, it's the NWA. It's a lot of exposure. Uh, and I accidentally did a John Laurinaitis impression there. Um, <laughs> was it, the end of, Was Johnny? Wait, 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 I'm sure. Maybe he could have been right. Um, but you go to the site and it's like a it's a piece of crap. Actually, IWCWrestling.com is not wrestling. It's somebody's blog thing. Uh, so .dot org. You didn't even get a .dot com, guys. You go to their. You go How to, don't they get a .dot com? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you didn't even do that. The TV you have on here. We went through this the other night. I think WrestleFan. You and I went through this on here. We you, did. You yeah. had a TV and a list some stuff. One a great, great, great uh, form for all your banners being completely different. Um, you, you go down here and it's like, okay, it goes to some kind of site or whatever, right? You get to about here and most of the stuff is like, oh, there's nothing there on Blip TV that went directly to Blip TV and that's it. There, uh, some of these 404 pages, so it, it, this is this is horrible. This is not how you present anything. Yeah, they hey, need to, we're going to be down for thing. a short while. There's no, there's no, okay, you can say that these new things are some kind of quality control. Are they really doing it the right way if their own site doesn't even work? Right. That's the problem. They need to, it, I think that's the biggest problem with the NWA. It needs not just necessarily just their website. They need a professionalist look and they need a way to get out there. We mentioned, however, many weeks ago about they were a Hollywood, NWA Hollywood was going to go to TV. They need to find something different. They need to stick out. They need mm -hmm. to, you know, get out there. And I'm, I, that's, and people ask, what's the big reason for being an NWA affiliate? It's because there is, while we complain, oh, what the lineage, there is a lineage mm -hmm. there. There is a nostalgia there that could be tapped into. Mm -hmm. Being but a it's part not of being, NWA. But then, hold on. It's not being tapped into beyond somebody in an indie show going, oh, NWA. I remember the NWA. It's not being tapped beyond that. And that's what they need to do. Your your NWA is just like Virgil sitting there at at the <laughs> booth, 
you know, getting all the guys that are like, mm -hmm. I remember Virgil. Here's 20 bucks for me to take a picture of you with me, you know, uh, with my own camera. This is the NWA. The w NWA is, is raping 20 bucks for a picture of, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, I remember that. That's why all the girls. Thinking, uh, that's why all the groups the are in the This is the biggest remember when we can have. This is. This is. We don't do remember it's, when anymore this week. No. And, and, it's the and NWA. That's, that's it. Every remember time you go in. Every time you go and, sit and see an NWA show or see an advertiser or whatever that, that makes you give them money, it's a remember when. Yeah, you know, it's thinking. It's thinking in the short term. It is. It's, it is. It's they not. They they don't have a long term thought as to how they're going to get themselves out there. That's what they need to do, and that's what that's the only thing that's going to reinvigorate the NWA. They do need to, like you mentioned, so they do need to be on top of it with all their companies. So they all look pro as professional as this in that they're on the internet and they understand how it works. Mm -hmm. But they, that's what they need to do. The, the ref shirts and the licensing and all that stuff is a small part of it, I think, in a sense. It, it, it sounds like it. the interpretation is this is just NWA trying to get their cut out of the hard work we're doing. Mm -hmm. Again, what is the, the NWA really doing for them? I know, uh, well, I, I don't know for certain, but from everything I've seen, uh, I, you know, what did NWA East PWX get out of being in the NWA other than the name? I mean, really, it was a confusing brand because what, what are they? You know, are they Pro Wrestling Express or are they NWA, NWA East? Uh, secondly, uh, did any, I never saw anything advertised for like an NWA champion coming through. Or yeah. NWA been, tag I team champion. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Wheels. You probably follow that a, a bit closer than I do. A little bit. I mean, and it, it's been forever. They said that an NWA World Heavyweight Champion has been in PWX and stuff like that. And the only like big champions they had were the NWA East uh, Mid. Um, it was one of the tag teams. Mm -hmm. And Ashton Amherst and like Jr. Mega were the tag team, and I guess NWA is like you're not defending it on other shows, so give us our belts back. Yeah, yeah, so. uh, yeah. And then, and, then uh, and just I want to show uh, the other couple of points here. Um, there, there's some more provisions about what territory is yours. You can't cross over in territories. They're they're eliminating eliminating the ability to be in the in the fair circuit. Which is where a lot of these wrestling groups uh, do make a lot of money because there's a lot of people already at the fair. A lot of people buy tickets. That's where they're making like they're they're doing good, and you just eliminated a big uh, cash maker, money maker for these guys. That are I'm sorry, these are indies. They're probably not making that much money in the long run, um, and, and you and you just cut them off at the knees there. Um, yeah, it, it just seems like a limit. And again, what are you doing? You know, what 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 is the advantage here? Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, it, it, when these go down, it does anything look professional? Maybe they got some big overhaul coming. I doubt it. I really doubt it. It's been how it many years? It needs to happen years? quick. It's been how many years? You it needs to happen soon for it to matter. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it does. It really does. You know, it, it's it's all going to be very too too minuscule, little little little, too late. Yeah. So there you go. Um, yes, we finally talked about the NWA. You're welcome. Uh, with that, I think is that, is that all of the Indie Minute there, sir? That is all of this week's Indie Minute. Excellent. Russian Excellent. free. All right, let's take a look at what's going on on gold. What else is going on around the internet? Oh, wait, before we get to gold, DJ Lunchbox has a message for you. Since he's not here this week, he put his thoughts in this tidy little message. We'll be right back. What's up, hot dogs? It's time for Lunchbox Video Wrestling Fun Time! Triple H cut his hair. A quick moment of silence for those flowing Helmsley locks. AJ can't fire people who hit her. Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara have been doing a great job covering each other's failures. Hall of Famer Kurt Angle will be an analyst for the new NBC series World Series of Fighting alongside Bass Rotten, completing a cocktail of crazy unseen since Jesse Ventura fingered Bob Backlund on the roof of Madison Square Garden. 
While I was filming this, Kurt Angle said he's not actually doing that. Conflicts of interest. I have no joke for that. Bully Ray is re-signed with TNA, while Devon's been hinting at going back to the WWE. Devon! Get the... better job! And probably healthcare! In a recent interview, Glenn Jacobs said he's nothing like his character Kane. I guess that means Kane is a totalitarian who likes burning things, all-encompassing propaganda campaigns which are disseminated through the state-controlled mass media and running around yelling, everything within the state, nothing outside the state, nothing against the state. Look it up, nerds. Batista will have his first MMA fight coming up soon. He says he would love to return to the WWE as soon as all this PG bullshit blows over. And related news, no one gives a shit. Wade Barrett returned to SmackDown in fine form with his new Fight Club brawler gimmick. He brutalized Yoshitatsu and then said he was open for business in his fine-ass, sexy British voice. <laughs> Monkey <R> <laughs> Hey! Hey, wait a- Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Me again. The other one. It's not Lunchbox. That's no. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's They'll find me eventually. Leave it, leave it there. To be a guest, put uh, service also, to the Also, test. Sword, when you told me to look for news stories on the Facebook page to see if there was anything, the only thing I found was Triple H cut his hair. Triple H cut his hair! Oh my god! Missed it. Uh, I debunked on Facebook the fact that Jock's answer for his favorite vegetable is ruled invalid because a cucumber is a fruit. Yeah. Come and get it when I spit it I'm the best to rip it, best to whip it Yeah, that's a P on a fitted On a mission to get in and flip your team, I'm winning Whiskey sipping, I'm sick of the B in every sentence Sick of them It is a special Escape the Cage Weapons Cage match On the track, I be writing it Conscious, I be fighting it Kicks, snare, boom, bat, long as they be like it What's up, Wrestling Mayhem crew, fans and friends across the land? It's Mad Mike, once again with your Minute of Mayhem. And I'm actually running a little late for work, so this is going to be a very quick minute. Um, I want to talk about TNA, very briefly. Uh, holy fuck, TNA, have you screwed up royally. Um, listen, I've been reviewing Impact for a year on the Wrestling Mayhem Show website. And, you know, despite some of the things I say... Things were on an upward trend. Zima Ion is the x Division champion. He's awesome. Austin Aries is your world heavyweight champion. He's awesome. And the Aces and Eights thing, you know, it's passable. It's passable. It's about as passable as the WWE Invasion angle. But at No Surrender, you gave Jeff Hardy the Bound for Glory series title shot. Um, when... I actually would prefer any of the three other guys to win that. And Jeff Hardy does not deserve his 30-second chance or whatever. Um, so TNA, I'm giving you an ultimatum. You have until Bound for Glory to convince me to keep reviewing you. If Jeff Hardy wins at Bound for Glory, I'm going to stop reviewing TNA, at least on the site. I'll keep, probably keep watching it and keep bitching about it in this minute, but I'm going to stop reviewing it on the site and I'll switch to something else. So, TNA, you guys may be bound for glory. I'm bound for better programming. It's just the way it goes. And, um, thoughts and prayers go out to Jerry Lawler. Uh, I've met him a couple times. Seems like a really cool dude. Um, <laughs> always had women with him that were younger than me and yes younger than me every time I've met him which is over a span of a couple years but anyway you know I, I'm pretty sure King would appreciate that uh, I saw last night last night got weird um, but I mean it seems like he's going to be he's stabilized now and it seems like he's gonna make a full recovery so that's good that's awesome and, um, get well sued, King. Big ups. Oh, and, um, one last thing. The last segment between Punk, 
Brett and Cena was phenomenal. I don't know who said it on Twitter last night, but someone said that Punk for Cena was the best rival of this generation. And I think they're right. Well, that's me for this week, guys. Talk to you later. Peace, bitches. Hey, guys, we're back, and uh, thanks, Bad Mike, for that. I gotta say, we kind of skipped the Remember When, because it feels like we kind of did it in the any minute. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, with the way the rest of the show may go here. Uh, first, I want to address a couple things there. Yeah, uh, a few of us watched the uh, TNA No Surrender, and it was kind of, what the hell happened? Yeah. Um, it, 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 they were going so good. It was. It was. It just seemed it like a left so turn. Good. Like a, some of the, the matches were pretty good. X Division match, tag match, I thought were, were tremendous. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it, them. It was just a huge left turn. The, uh, the, 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 the Hulk Hogan, well, first the Hulk Hogan, make your decision and then Pyro. <laughs> well, that wasn't the pay per view, but that was Impact. But was it? That was Impact. I'm sorry. I watched impact. it all in the same Also, I, but tied out on Hogan. Simon Hogan love the fact that he is telling police, ordering police officers on what to do. Mm -hmm. It was it got up to the point where it was just ridiculous. Um, the the segments of him talking to the police officers to make sure he's surrounded. Even worse, the, they there was no reason for police officers because no one interfered. Yeah, nothing happened. Well, because they locked down, they did their job, man. Nothing happened. Yeah. yeah. Also, nobody got unmasked. We don't, yeah, we don't know. know anything. It was just another impact as far as this whole ace and eight, aces and eights goes. It wasn't even a good impact. No, no, it was an it was a mediocre impact for thirty four ninety five or whatever it is. Um, yeah. yeah, even even the bit like what do they call them? The arm breaker when they hit half the mask off the. It was a beard, so it's like okay, it was somebody with a beard. All right, we narrowed it down. You know, it, yeah. no, no, no. It, it's, it's Mike Knox. No. Oh. Well, yeah, that is there. Just saying. I, I, I. No, wait, wait. wait keep me Mike Knox's beard. He has but, a big old beard. But other than that, like, the women's match was good. As much as some of us hate the the referee, who I just realized is Tiffany horrible. from ECW. She looks wait, really different. different. She looks really different. No, like this week, I, I finally put it together. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, At least learn how to referee. Like honestly. For fuck's sake! <laughs> I think we can we can actually be tell that to everybody in TNA. Learn how to uh, all the referees in TNA. Mm -hmm. Learn how to referee a damn match, and take better ref bumps. Oh, the three, Earl Hebner, the three ref bumps in one match was like, that in the necessary? First hour? Why? That means you know what happens when you do that in the first hour? That means something really fucked up is going to happen in the main event. And yeah. that's also exactly the, also what the, happened. Also the fact that it was there were two ref bumps of the same referee. Yeah, yeah. Earl Why Hebner. did he need the third one when the other one was already down? It, it's, yeah, no, no. Earl Hebner should be dead by now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hate to say this, Sorg. I'm sorry. I mean, I just... just my God, the man's refing. Jerry Lawler wrestles a, wrestles a match <laughs> and does well and has a heart attack at ringside. Uh, you commentate, Earl Hebner commentate, takes yeah. two ref bumps and still going. I'm waiting for that one, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, that's TNA. Um, he mentioned something else there. Oh, hey, that was an interesting, interesting comment. John Cena and CM Punk are the best feud of this generation? Agree? Disagree? I, I think... I agree by consolation because when was the last time we had a feud that lasted this long? That's true. That's true. It's like a year later, and, and really it kind of feels there like... There have been good feuds. They just last two or three months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why it's the one that stands out. The last one I remember like this, I want to go with, like, a, a Cena Edge, you know? Yeah, because that... Kept going for years and years. Yeah, you know, yeah, Orton yeah. was one of, another one who was just like it wouldn't stop. Yeah, yeah. But with this, it brings a whole new aspect to it. Mm -hmm. It brings they're both as much as you hate Cena, they're both really good on the mic. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Cena, like as much as we don't really like him as a wrestler, he's excelled really well on the microphone. Mm -hmm. I liked his promo last night. That's the first time I really that's enjoyed was, the John Cena promo. It was better promos. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. And he almost outshines. Uh, it was better uh, than Sam anything Punk. he did with The Rock in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm with you on that. And of course, you know, the big elephant in the room, uh, Jerry Lawler, uh, uh, last night. Last we saw, uh, well, well, of course, well, what happened for those that didn't watch Raw or, or maybe didn't catch everything? Uh, he, he did wrestle earlier in the night during uh, the beginning of the third hour. Um, uh, apparently, right in the middle of the match, I guess he just, uh, what they, they found it's a heart attack. He just uh, went into spasms and, and went to the floor, you know, fell over his chair and everything. Um, there are honestly, I hate to say this, there are some videos on the net right now that, like people with their cameras, shot down toward the announce table of them taking care of them. So I mean, if anybody yeah, that was bound to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody out there has a fan video. How many times is like a, some people see on Punk doing something goofy uh, off camera or something? Mm. Uh, you know, popped up. I mean, that's that's. That, yeah, that's inevitable. I, I was just wondering if somebody like got it, you know. Yeah. Um, like I feel like like that was kind of expected, you know. But I don't, I don't think they they got it until someone said, "Oh, look what look what's going on." Yeah, nobody nobody's, think, nobody's interested. Nobody's there, so. focused on the table. Someone caught like a snippet, like of I. Somebody showed it to me up at the college today. That they said if you listen to. Closely during the tag team match, you can hear Lawler breathing a little heavy. Yeah, like I I didn't catch it at first because me and Sorg and who was it? Sorg, AJ, WrestleFan, and I were like talking over it. Yeah. Then we saw the everybody looked to to the to the The, right hand side. Yeah, the whole front row on the camera side was looking at the announce table. We and we were thinking. Okay, there's probably a fight going on right like, now. I thought I thought the way that, that there was that, and then like we didn't hear Jerry, like that was yeah. noticeable, and then we heard Jerry Chance. I'm like, maybe, maybe a fan got in a fight with him or something, you know? Because yeah. yeah, right there, I could see like any fan just do. I thought just somebody did somebody did something really stupid over by commentary, like right. like a fan. They, and then they showed, like they just like cut to a like a part of the, the they caught a glimpse of the table. And Jerry wasn't there, mm-hmm. so I, that's when we got like, "Holy shit, what's going on?" Yeah, like yeah. we didn't know we didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it, it, at but, that point, it was something had happened, and there was rumors on Twitter, and we weren't sure if it was part of the show or not. Yeah, and then Michael I Cole thought, was I quiet. Thought, I thought it was pretty clear it was it wasn't part of the show. I mean then, that that they, I don't, I don't that they know. just disappeared I, I mean, like that. I mean, it, 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 but you never it know, especially wrong. with Jerry being involved in a major storyline at the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. you never know. And, and that's, well, the uh, vi- the video kind of caught Jerry like when it was like I forget it which African American wrestler it was because and like the camera was focusing on them, but you could see like right down in that corner, right at the announce table that. Jerry's head was down on the table. And then you saw him pan away real quick and up toward, like, Kane mm-hmm. and them. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's the thing we mentioned last night in the Google Hangout. Uh, big kudos, well, a lot of kudos had to be dealt out to a lot of people that night, but kudos to the camera people who did an amazing job of not catching anything. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying, that these guys are experts. Like, how many times were there fights in the crowd? And we, the only reason we know is because there's some kind of chant or people looking at us in an odd direction in the crowd. Um, those guys are experts in, in covering that up. And whoever's uh, switching the cameras in the back um, know, know how to cover that up. And they're shouting directions to the camera guys to say, don't give me that shot. You know, get it over this way, you know. And then I think, like, we were talking about somebody noticed, like, you saw somebody run into the main frame. And they, and cut, they kept cutting. When they cut to a different the- one. And once they were, like, to the ramp, they cut to the wide shot again when he would be out of frame, like stuff like mm. that. I mean, I think we've done that a few times to avoid things, um, mm. you know, in our productions. So they just have a lot more cameras to deal with it. So, um, yeah. oh, and I'd hate to see you deal with that. There's going to be like, oh, God. Oh, uh, well, when any show, any show I'd be involved with. I mean, look what happened with Gregory Iron. He got hurt in the middle of the ring. I'm just like, well, we're done. You know, I mean, that's <laughs> that that was it. You know, everything stops. But you're not live. That's the thing. Uh, right. You know, the, the WWE has a, has a big 
you know, if something goes wrong, they're live. They have yes. to do something. Yes. They have 15, 20,000 people in that arena that they still have to, that, you know, that pay for a show. They have whatever obligations they have to, to advertisers, et cetera, et cetera, USA Network, wherever else. They have to finish the show. They have uh, an yeah. extremely that, that, expensive yeah, venture yeah. Going I mean, on. I mean, you know, you know granted, the, you know, the Earth, Moon, Big Fire, whatever, something would happen. But it's live TV, the, sure. The best... The best thing I saw about there were the complaints about them continuing the show. The, uh, someone wrote to the effect of, "It's not our decision. It's not even their decision. Yeah, it's not. Or it's not up to us. No, it isn't. It isn't. It, it's. It, it's like you can't stop the train. You know, because you forgot a bag. The, the train doesn't stop. You know, the the time is filled. There's nothing else to put there, you know. And, and, and as it is, you know, everybody had their plan. As you see, we cut out commentary, but the matches happened. The plan went through. The graphics went up where they were supposed to. Everybody did their job. Cutting. They just they just cut out Cole because, it, I mean, obviously Cole saw it and, and he's a friend. <laughs> and, and, and holy, holy shit. I, I forwarded you a picture from uh-huh. the Mayhem Show account, like, right now. Mm-hmm. It, it's the most heartbreaking picture that you could see. Uh, I think it's the one that's been passed around yeah, by a lot of people. Situation, because I mean, yes, Jerry the King Lawler had a heart attack at ringside, and that is terrible. But he got to he got taken backstage to receive medical attention, and immediately got shipped off to the hospital to receive even more medical attention. However, his closest co-worker for years in the recent decade was completely helpless and sat there and watched it all happen and had to stay at the commentary table. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All he had to go by was what was being said in his ear he can, he through the headset. He couldn't go be by side or Exactly. Like that. I, I, mean, mean, I mean, that would be... He, and that's the equivalent... Of if something would happen uh, to you or I mm-hmm. while this yeah. is going on. Yeah. Um, I mean, granted, we would have the ability to smaller, stop the show. Smaller yeah. scale, right. of course. I mean, we would have the ability to stop the show and it, everything wouldn't go on as planned. Mm-hmm. But right. WWE doesn't have that luxury. So Michael Cole was stuck at that announce table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when he um, really he, he still he, he still is a keystone of that show. Like I don't think anybody else. I think the reason you have Michael Cole on both shows because he is the guy right. with the experience to make sure everything hits a point. Like he is the guy that they trust to do that. They'll oh, pair yeah. him with whoever, but he is the, he is. I, I want to say the showrunner. I, 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 it's 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 a it's a role. He's the, it, it, the he's, he's the, the showrunner. Yeah, he's the mm-hmm. face. He's the voice. He, he's the showrunner as far as he's the one that gets the message out there. Yeah, you know. Um, so they 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 needed him out there for that. I mean, and, and to deliver anything. I think that's really the reason he stayed was to do the okay. This is what's going on. You know, he he went from announcer then to you know, I mean, the guy was in Desert Storm. He went from that to journalist. Right. You know, he went from entertainer mm-hmm. to journalist, and and uh, that he got through a match, you know, without you know mentioning it, without really noticing, other than that Jerry was gone. Right. Wasn't yeah. didn't fault in anything that he was no, talking no, about about the match. No, he was like, well, that's weird. There's only one person, but you know, uh, you know, well, well, what's going on? And they came out and broken. And, 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 you know, talk about what, what really happened there. And as soon as he said that, and, and you saw that match end, mm-hmm. and he was able to tell, he the tears were streaming. He was like, like Chachi said, he was helpless. It was like he, he just saw his friend collapse. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the guy is um, super strong. Um, no matter what we say about him, as far as his character goes. Exactly. Uh, what he had to go through last night mm. was just ridiculous. Like, next week he'll probably become a dick again. Like, yeah. Uh, for his know, character. If he's a dick and he but, screws and he, and he makes the show hard to listen to, I'm going to, you know, talk. Yeah, we're going to talk that. about his that's character still, that's, again. That's still kind of like but his job and everything. But, well, yeah, but um, he's a heel. We're supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Well, no, yeah, but I do respect you know what he had to have gone through that night you know mm-hmm. he's a pro he's a pro and he's doing what he's supposed to do you know um i mean when, yeah and bobby's bobby's saying in the chat yeah you almost can't make him 
uh, of the dickish heel anymore after this, even though it wasn't part of the storyline. You know, it, and kinda, it, will. it, changes, I mean, it changes the perception because now everybody for real has sympathy for Michael Cole. And you can't change that because everybody's going to remember what happened last night. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he said he doesn't think you can do that after what happened. No, you, and right. I mean, he could try, but it won't. It won't fly. No. So, so what you fly. honestly need to do maybe is just maybe put a a Jr. beside him for a while just to see if just I, for a little while just to get those two talking or even a. No, no, uh, but they're going to no, they're no, going to no, replace no. them. They're going to have Josh Matthews out there. They're going to have you know whoever out there. Matt Striker. Ma- yeah, maybe a Matt Striker. Maybe a Scott Stanford. Probably not a Scott Stanford. Um, he's more oh, like, I'd like to see Scott Stanley. Oh, yeah, but he's too much of a straight man, I think, the, the, yeah. the pair of I think Stryker would probably so. be better, and give Stryker that heel, like, mm. dick yeah. thing right there. Oh, maybe they'll throw Joey, no, Joey Styles as the straight man. Um, well, that could be interesting, actually. Um, and there's, there's lots of options. They have people, you know. They, they, yeah. They've really, I think, you know, one, you know. They can even throw in it's, Miz again. It's, was, kind of, it's kind of unfortunate to say this, but it really feels like they kind of got too comfortable with Michael Cole. What if this happened to Michael Cole? What the fuck would they do then? You know? Uh, the show must go on. They yeah, find yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they find somebody, they throw him in there, they figure uh, just out that like, they And they pieces. said everybody in so. the back was, like, in tears as soon as they were we, on, like, Jerry there because they are like, they didn't know what was happening. And they said a lot of the guys were in tears and the girls – uh, it, I mean, you yeah, could almost yeah. you almost saw it, and even in Punk's eyes when he came out, because his eyes were red. Mm-hmm. It's one hey. of those things because no matter what happens on screen, back screen, Jerry's one of those guys that mm. everyone goes to because mm-hmm. he's been there for so long. Yep, and it, it's just one of those things that it, it wasn't like uh, Eddie. Yeah, and I, I, it, I mean, Eddie didn't happen mid broadcast. That's a, that's the thing I uh, I was mentioning last night. I think luckily I was able to get into wrestling before I had to um, deal with that incident that happened. You know, uh, before that was very similar, I guess, to this. Um, I only had to ever deal with Benoit and Guerrero, and that. You know, like you mentioned, didn't happen live. I didn't. The closest was that the Benoit one, they were going to have the show in Corpus. And I was going to that show. That's the closest I've had to that stuff. But last night, I, I, like, I don't, I, obviously I can't put myself in that position, but I, it, it almost felt as if how it would feel for the Owen Hart incident. It, it, it did feel, you know, it, that way in a sense. Because there was that uncertainty and the, the fact that, it, you know, you're waiting, <clears throat> that sense of just waiting. It was, you know, it was and it was hard. It was hard to go. Th- I mean, it's it. And I give so much respect to everyone in the back for competing. Um, fucking Bret Hart. How the, I couldn't understand how Bret Hart would, was able to go out there, cut a well enough promo after what had happened. Especially mm-hmm. how close he'd been to Jerry, and also the incident he went through. You know, it's but, well. It, I, it's, I, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. okay, like I, I don't see the lineage between the two, even though they both happen live. Mm-hmm. Because the one we're ta- uh, the one we talked about before, that was a freak accident. That's true. And a cable broke, and whatever. But this was a medical emergency, and everybody knew it. Everybody knew he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, feeling it. But he, but they still went on without that uncertainty. With the other one, you kind of wished, but it was a freak accident, like I said. And you right. don't have that cert. Uh, at, you, you don't know what's going to happen. But with Jerry and all that. Uh, thankfully, he is uh, he's breathing on his own, right? Yeah, the uh, yeah. the update is that he is breathing. He is coherent. Yeah, um, he, I believe he had a stint uh, put into uh, a, I'm not sure a valve or something. Yeah, yeah. These they're and they're still awaiting results of a CAT scan um, that was on his chest and his head. There are the doctors are right now, I guess, looking to see if the fact that he did. 
uh, you know, the, the fact that he did have the heart attack and that he was, as people were stating, he was clinically dead for like 20 minutes. That's amazing. That, that which count. is amazing and um, for them to revive him. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> um, but But the, they're waiting to see if there was any brain damage that occurred because of that. And that's what they're basically awaiting with the, uh, with the CAT scan. Mm. Like, it just seems that they got different situation. Like, I know, I've never, myself, I've never seen anything like it. Like, I've never been in that situation or, because, like, I was there for whenever that happened. But I wasn't actually watching because I was a little kid. But it just seemed like a total, totally different situation. Plus, the, like, if this happened back then, we wouldn't be talking about Jerry, like, being here. Just right. Like, yeah. like, the medical advances we have saved his life. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, not even the advances, but the amount of people that was, it was in the arena at that time, that, you know, was able to attend to him, get to the, get him to the back. Yeah, they know, got to him really quick last night. And my hat's off to all of them for that. Definitely, yeah. All right. I think on that note, I think it's a good point for us to kind of uh, move out of here. Um, I think, uh, uh, well, uh, let, let's bring her back around. Uh, Fuck TNA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, TNA. <laughs> this is no, bring it back around. I was going to do, let, let's do this. I think this is the way for us to, to go out of here. I want to say. Uh, I wasn't done yet. Okay, what do you got, Charge? Well, I, I, no, I, this. Coming from the same event, uh, however, it's amazing how many people think that everything that happens on the wrestling show is a part of the wrestling show. Yeah. Based yeah. on the responses from Twitter alone mm-hmm. last night. Mm-hmm. Like, people that don't watch wrestling were oh, sitting yeah. there asking how they were supposed to know if this was real or fake. Well, or how not. many times? So remember remember how how long has it been that that... that, that that wrestling was trying to trick us and become more re- real-ish. And, re- and so you would think, well, is that real? Is- Wait a minute, is that real? But also, like, but- how many times have we seen, like, they do a storyline where John Cena gets attacked or is injured, and they're and the announcers are t- portraying it in a way that has a very serious tone to it. Or mm-hmm. trying to bring a serious tone to it. I'm not saying that's a problem and that's directly, but it causes that uncertainty from people yeah, that it does. It does. haven't I been through that I mean, situation. We're, we're talking about we're talking about a thing where 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 uh, you know Vince McMahon you know was blown up in a limo. Uh, Vince McMahon had had uh, you know a, a set dropped on him. You yeah. know, uh, it, it's it's just you know they they, they, they try to make it make the uh, he had uh, one of those drama in of memorial. It. Mem- and memory things on. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like they have at the end of the shows. It's like in memory of Vince McMahon. So what do you know what's real or not? Yeah, yeah and, I mean, the whole thing is suspending disbelief and then mm-hmm. something real happens and they're like, wait, do, am I supposed to turn that off now? Wasn't there like so. a uh, thing that happened to Ric Flair? Uh, there was like a heart attack thing they did in the ring. I, yeah. I actually was thinking about this today uh, in retrospect to this. Because it was, um, and I don't think... I pretty sure it was determined that that was absolutely fake. Yeah, that was. But it was played up. They they you know work shoot or whatever it was, and you know be, you know told everybody it was a real heart attack or something. Which that's Didn't just. Did Long also do the same thing? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe. Well, you know, you're thinking uh, Wilson. Uh, Al Wilson, Corey, yeah. Wilson but that's dead. a completely different. Al Wilson, you know, he's he's technically dead of a heart attack. Then didn't he like really die in a few weeks or something? No, no, no. He, I think he's still alive. Right. I think he's still alive. Oh. So no, no. He's yeah. He's still alive. Yeah. Um. But the, like, and I think someone related to me today. I was talking to about like when uh, Buff Bagwell broke his neck on like a live thunder, yeah. and like the the scrambling to you know, it's but it there is that suspension of. Is this real? Is this fake? And a lot of the fans didn't uh, like. I watched a clip from the Buff Bagwell one. A lot of the fans weren't like somber. They weren't. They they thought it was just part of the show. Yeah, yeah. You never know. You never know. And, and even and then then somebody like that comes back with that. And I remember distinctly like Buff Bagwell came back, 
and he completely healed out over it. You know, he completely yeah. like you broke my neck, screw you. You know, and, and, and like fake the brace and all that stuff. You know, so you're like, oh, was any of it real? Um, another one, oh, it just escaped me. I just had one to my tongue uh, that was like that. Um, what's going on recently? Uh, who was the guy that got hurt? Uh, that that uh, Shima was in a match with Zima. Oh, uh, oh uh, Jesse Sorensen. Jesse, Jesse Sorensen. Yeah. So you have him get hurt. You have all these medical things. You know, this is you know this is a problem. This is really happening. We're talking to his crying parents, and then you go to like Zima saying, "I'm glad he's freaking hurt. I'm most dangerous." Da 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 da. I mean that that goes back to to uh, you know the crypto thing with Chris Chris Benoit. He legitimately broke Sabu's neck, and they made a character out of it. You know, well, look at uh, and, and this, this, this always happens. I mean, this this, this, this always happens. Um, it's their way of preventing. But when you're going back and forth like that, because this is something real that happened, will be turned it into a character and going to turn him into a dick. And then you're like, then there's certain people are going to be like, OK, then did he really break his neck or is, rem- is everything uh, real I'll, or is everything fake? I'll, I'll give an example of this. Um, the very few times my mother has ever watched wrestling with me, <laughs> she watched a SmackDown episode where Kurt Angle was choke slammed off of a balcony by Big Show onto concrete with blood around his head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she would not get over that. She she still believes it probably to this day. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. On that note, uh, let's let's go ahead and cut out of here. Um, how about how about instead of what we usually do, uh, you know, kind of uh, as a throw out for this, um, tell us what you learned from Jerry Lawler. Mm. Mm. Man, mm. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a little bit of a curveball here for the last minute, but uh, but uh, I, you know, I, he's still somebody, you know. Uh, you know, there's an article over on uh, Fox 8's website in Cleveland. Actually, interviews with uh, I, I know uh, Johnny Gargano and uh, Gregory Iron. Who's uh, on here is Greg Smith, of course, um, and Joe Dabrowski. Uh, we're all interviewed for a piece because, I mean, uh, Lawler was, you know, big in Cleveland and everything. Talk about he's an Indians fan. He's a Browns fan. Um, he's an illustrator. You know, I, I read his book. He's, he's got a lot of background on that, you know. Um, you know, uh, so, uh, so so we, we, let's go around here. Uh, uh, Russell fan, what'd you learn? Uh, I learned from Jerry Lawler. Um just, I, I guess, uh, the funny side, I guess, of it, because uh, I didn't get into Lawler, obviously, when he was big, um, but when he was announcing, I did love the fact when I first started watching that he could turn, like, a phrase out of anything. He was mm-hmm. that guy that kind of, you know, it was, now, and it, it was not always with the puppies and stuff like that, but he was able to turn a phrase really quickly that I thought kind of, was kind of always interesting. Sexual um, innuendos. Yeah, innuendo, but also just, like, you know other stuff it was i always found that part of him kind of interesting because to to think on your feet like that um and i've made uh i made comments in the past uh most recently about not liking jerry lawler's commentary and not liking the way he's portrayed on tv um and uh but obviously no one wants that done to every anyone uh what happened to him and i i respect uh lawler and i hope that um he can get through this. Mm-hmm. But you, Riz? Um, like, I've rem- uh, I, I learned from Gary Lawler that you can actually have a great career, like, just being you. Yeah. Like it's it it, it wasn't like the 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 King uh, Gary Lawler King is actually a you know. A fart, farce and all that stuff, but he really was. He lived every day like you see, mm-hmm. and that's what we liked. That's why I liked about him. But also, he he put on a great show against comedians, against legends, against jobbers, against anybody. Even when he was in in the uh, younger in his younger days. And he's been in this business for, let's see, seventies. He's been in this for 40 years, 40 years. And he's still ticking Mm -hmm. and he's not crazy yet. (laughs) Mm. He's not Ric Flair crazy. No. So yeah, that's, that's what I learned from King. What about you wheels? 
Uh, just to touch on a little bit of what even Riz says, I mean, the man, like, was able to throw off drop kicks like a young person last mm-hmm. night, and mm-hmm. he flew around like some of the younger guys, and it, I learned that no matter what your age is, sometimes your conditioning helps, and it showed that he could still go and still look better than Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. What about you there, Chach? Jerry Lawler is the epitome of an excellent work eth- ethic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, the guy wasn't really ever, like, the main event. Like, he well, was... He, he would not, go not, not out... Not nationally. Not nationally. Yeah. He would go out, he would do what he was told to do, mm-hmm. he would make it look good, and he would leave with a smile. Mm-hmm. Unless he wasn't supposed to leave with a smile. But, I mean, <laughs> he, he went out, and whether he was supposed to put someone over, or he was supposed to... W- to win, he did it with everything he had. He still does it with everything he has. Because I mean, I, I, like Riz or like Wheel said, I mean, it, Dolph, Maven, and Jay or er, and and King should all just get in the ring and have a drop kick off. <laughs> Maven would probably win that because I mean. It, it just uh, it just King and Zig uh, drop kicking each other last night was just like oh well this is how I do it but it still looks damn good mm-hmm. and it'll never be what you do but you know and then I it, do you honestly think the guy would have been resuscitated last night if he wasn't in his top physical prowess right yeah. 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 I mean, and it just goes to show what type of, of physical shape the guy is in. How old is he? I don't know. I what? think it said 62. He's in his 60s? Wow. No way he's in his 60s. That's what I thought, too. I'm Holy like, there has shit. to be something wrong on that where I found it. Hold on. I'm, 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 tr- I'm looking. I'm looking. Um, also, he's probably the only politician, wrestler who goes into politics, wow. who I'd actually yeah. vote for. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, Linda McMahon, 62. maybe, I don't know. Uh, who, Jesse Ventura is a crazy fuck. <laughs> but Jerry Lawler just seems like the, that lovable guy you can vote for. He'd be like, puppies for everybody. Uh, and he's not talking about the mm-hmm. doggies. Yeah, I, 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 he's a guy uh, yeah, from the chat. Um, uh, Bobby uh, remembers hearing about his feud with Andy Kaufman and also his uh, work with JR. Uh, that will always be uh, my announced team when I think of wrestling. It is. It has been the announced team, you know, on and off, but pretty consistently for uh, what the last fifteen years at this point. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, just, it, I, it, I don't it, know about you, Sorg. I mean, I don't know how many times. I mean, I know you do some of the DVDs and stuff like that, but how many times? We've all possibly met him through IWC and yeah. just other venues, and he's always been a stand-up guy. He'd come talk to you, and oh yeah, yeah, he's he's one of those guys. Like I, I, I uh, finally remember uh, it was a uh, uh, night of, night of legends uh, last year, the last one they did up there in uh, the Franklin area, and uh, I remember him walking in, saying, you know, he said hi to us at, at the DVD table, like he, he, you know, approached us, you know. Um, and then uh, I got to hear a little bit of him catching up with Val Venus. You know, they have an intersect there, uh, and I guess they hadn't seen each other for a bit. You know, both <laughs> WWE guys, obviously, they got, uh, you know, uh, know each other from around then, you know, and uh, uh, and that was really cool. And yeah, and he was like the nicest guy. Like, I was pretty astounded at how nice he was, you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of like what everybody says about Mick Foley nicest guy, you know, great to work with, you know, everything like that. He'll, you know, he'll do anything, you know. Um, and, and, you know, same with Jerry, you know, and it seemed like everybody had that story on, like on Twitter, everybody tweeted, like, pray for Jerry and all that stuff, mm-hmm. pray for Lawler, but they also had like a, a story to go along with it. Like mm-hmm. Rosa Mendez said that every time she went up to Jerry, whatever he was doing, he went up and talked to her probably because other things but but it's <laughs> but but like uh who was it that 
one I forget who it was. She was there at on Sunday when they were doing an indie show together. Mm-hmm. And they they said she he was really nice to her and really nice to everybody there and a really nice guy, but everybody had that story. Mm-hmm. And it well for except for one which I'm not going to get into because I'm going to freak out over it. But everybody had that great story about Jerry Lawler. And it just see, showed how love this guy was for what he did and what he does still. Yeah. I mean, I do remember fondly, not only just legend shows like Sword said, there was a time that I was at dinner after a wrestling event. It was him, Rave, and all of them at one table. And I'm not talking like far away. They were like, can we sit near you guys? And we all sat together and they talked about stories and we all laughed. And I mean, Jerry was just, he'd remember a name too. He's like, and tell me something, Aaron, what, what were your thoughts about this? And that I'm like, that made me feel really good. And that's where I appreciate Jerry for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Uh, well, on that note, guys, you know, kind of get out with a little less gusto than we usually do here, but, uh, you know, pray for Jerry, you know, as far as we can hear, uh, looks like he's doing, he's doing, uh, better. Uh, you know, for, uh, but keep an eye there at www.com, all their stuff. I know Mashable, there was even an article today, Mashable was uh, uh, going on about how uh, uh, how much they used social media to, uh, mm. uh, you know, let the fans and everything know, uh, hit the Facebook, hit the Google+, Plus, hit the Twitters. Um, Here, here's the weird updated. thing about that, the, too. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, the, the, the Pray for Lawler hashtag was the number one trending topic for about a few hours today. Mm-hmm. And you know what today is? September 9/11. 11th. Yeah. So it, it, it just feels weird that we're talking about Jerry Lawler above everything else. And that's, that's, that's saying something. Okay, was it pray for Lawler or pray for Jerry? It was Lawler. Both. They, they were both. doing both. Um, yeah. I think Lawler was the main thing, though. <laughs> That's the one that kept popping up on my Facebook a lot. I take it back. Right. Uh, uh, Lawler is a, a main eventer, considering he's, he's, a, he's held 168 championships, which is yeah. more than any other member of the WWE roster. Yes, not all in WWE. I, I mean, the, I know the perception is, oh, he doesn't done anything but goofy feuds with like Bret Hart and stuff. But or no, not no. roster. I'm sorry. More than anyone on the WWE staff. <laughs> <laughs> he just hasn't. Ha- he just yeah. hasn't held the WWE title. Yeah, exactly. I don't think he's. I don't think he's held a belt there. But yeah, his. He's a. He is a legend as far as like yeah. you know Memphis and that area and everything. So I mean that's that's pretty significant. Of course, you know what happened with Andy Coffin and everything. Uh, you know, oddly, I, I was listening to part one of the William Regal interview on uh, on uh, uh, Cole Cabana's podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it was the. It was the. Uh, Crap, Bill After? Yeah, the Bill After one. I'm sorry, that was, uh, and they were talking about the the Andy Kaufman and, uh, and kind of the the advent of that uh, starting. Uh, so it, I thought that was pretty appropriate. Mm-hmm. I got the cat, catch one of this after you know Jerry Lawler last night. So, all right, on that, guys. You know, hey, thanks a lot uh, uh, as usual. Please, uh, if you have any thoughts, you know, and as news breaks through the week, uh, you know, we'll be talking about it on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, on the Facebook group, please join us there. I invite everybody there because there's a lot of co- our conversation does have there. Uh, we are on Facebook. We have a page there. We're on Google+. Uh, and, of course, we're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please uh, drop your emails, uh, again, for all the above, for uh, good times. Good times. Good times. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, drop us a line at that voicemail at 412-206-WMS0. Uh, you know, and join us here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, check out the chat. Hang with us by the app. Check it by out the on app, your I think mine iPhones, is iPads, tight, and your Android devices. And uh, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully with a lot better news, a lot more fun. And we'll see you there. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the